I think it's recording. I don't know, it's hard to tell. So, this is the gearbox off the uh, FM fucking, what is it, 156 FM, my piece of crap. So, you might find it's not changing gear properly. Oh, yeah, I mean, watch it, it does it now. I mean, when the camera's pointing at it, it'll do it though. But been having a few selector issues with it basically it won't fucking change gear which isn't really that helpful so you can see how it works yeah the case normally holds that on there so I'm having to sort of do it with my hand and that but and oddly enough as I'm doing that it is actually shifting now but the reason it won't it keeps skipping is because that arm thing keeps moving about see that it's doing it again now it won't shift back up Will shift out a new. Oh no, it's maybe in this plastic. Right. Fucking. So basically, I've got a new one, and it is the same as a Honda CG125, as far as I can tell. Yeah, because I'm pulling on the lever there, and that's like seemingly giving it enough strength, though. But I put a washer on there. Anyway, I don't know if you can see it, but probably going to be one of the only videos that shows you what the linkage is like inside In a bit. right so we're looking at the uh, looking at the one that I've just took off can you see just I don't know you might not be able to see sorry it's a little shitty camera there's a wear mark like right right there I don't know if you can see I hope I'll find it in the right place that's where the cog touch is on. And if you get the new one, it's not a new one, it's an old old one off another 125 of some kind, but ain't no wear mark in that place there. I'll draw a diagram to explain where that wear mark is or something though, if you can't tell off the video, but I don't think the actual shift star is fucked on this, although I'm tempted to swap it out anyway. Ugh. It's just irritating because it's fucking new, it's absolutely new. No reason why that should happen though, but I must have just been a bit heavy handed, heavy footed with it or something. But anyway, dodgy dodgy motorcycle fans. Uh, so, what you can see right in front of you is the open crankcase on the 157 FMI. Yeah, you will be able to see it when I fucking put the inspection lamp in the right place. Right, so. Right in front of you, that's the open crankcase for the 157 FMI, which is basically almost an identical copy to the CG125 engine. Uh, I'm having gearbox problems with it, so let me just come over to my table over here and put that lamp in the right place. Can't do. Right, so anyway, fuck the lamp. What you'll f see, that gear selector is the uh, original and that one is a new one off uh, something like a YZ125 so um, I'm going to have to stick the camera in my mouth now I'm going to show you the wear marks on the uh, old gear s selector uh, if you can see it, I don't know if, if you can see it like right oh, fuck it on. right there uh, and I don't know why like, that could have come from one bad gear shift that way you do it hard and it slipped off and it's fucking and now it's continually slipping off I've got this other one here for about seven quid and it's absolutely identical and I knew it would be and I got a shift start there for about four quid and all and that's for this bike for the 157 FMI that's a 65 quid part the whole fucking vehicle was only 800 quid so it's like that little cog there is like I'll, I'll take more detailed photographs of it and shit and also sweet in a bit. Ah, Roger D sports fans. Uh, so, um, yeah, problem would appear to be solved now. So this, what you're looking at right in front of us is the engine, which is uh, 156 FMI. See that there is the gear selector thing I've been having problems with. Uh, it is more or less an exact copy of the CG125 engine, even down to really like minute details. So, 
the problem I was having, I'm not sure if hopefully you'll be able to see it, was this is the old shift plate. And like right there, right there, it's worn and it kept just jumping off and I, I can finally see why now and understand why just a shitty little bit of metal could have done that on just one bad gear change and that's and that's it it's conks won't work so I, had to, I got a new one of them off uh, yz125 uh, you'll find <coughs> the shifter shaft is identical a, this is the old one hopefully you'll be able to pick that out off the background absolutely identical so I didn't even bother putting the, the, old, the old one in it I just put the new old one back in it straight away boom changes gear now down to well let's face it not even one millimeters worth of metal was stopping it changing gear so uh, just for reference anyone who wants to know how they work you got like that star thing you'll, you'll be able to see from other diagrams so there we go but what it wasn't doing is when you try an upshift it's got to uh, I don't really, oh yeah you've got to, I've got to wrap the back wheel around on it. I don't really understand why it was wearing in that position to be honest but wrap the back, back wheel around so you can see how it that's like so that I'll fucking turn the back wheel around you can see how it goes through shit I did take a video of it slipping but it's a bit hard to fucking to illustrate to be honest but with this crap camera and all that's that's neutral that now so uh, yeah it would appear that this new shift shaft thing it weren't the spring either as far as I can tell seems to be the sh shape of the metal on it or something fuck knows I, I give up giving a shit to be honest I just want the fucking thing to work that's all it comes down to so Roger Dodger sports fans hope that helps somehow in a bit Right, just in case that video didn't record, what you're looking at here is the 157 FMI, an identical copy to the Honda CG125. I've been is having issues with the gear selector thing. It would appear that it was this thing here. Because it's, although it doesn't seem to be that worn, there is some wear marks on it, just on that lower centre portion of the bottle cap thing. I really, I couldn't say for definite why it's happened. Just maybe I bent this, or maybe the spring was loose, or something like that. But putting a real part off an actual Honda, not a fucking Chinese piece of shit, seems to have made it so it'll shift now. So uh, yeah, just in case anybody doesn't know how they work, that bottle cap looking thing there just sort of basically pushes. Well, it's not working. <laughs> Great example basically pushes on the uh, that dude uh, he really needs the uh, the wheel to be moving for it to work properly there we go gotta give it a good gotta give it a good shove in a second now though well which, which is a good thing there can only imagine it was either bent out of shape or something that's into third so yeah that I'm sure that this little view of it now it's in fifth and it don't go any further that's how I think I broke it actually is stamping on it when it was in fifth and you know you fucking you just you're just asking to fuck it up aren't you basically I'm gonna be well to uh, feather footed with this one so anyway so yeah it's 156 FMI copy of the CV125 and even the gearbox things are identical that's the gearbox shaft off a YZ125 selector shaft exactly the fucking same so I don't get fucked around and I tell you what the best bargain I've got of all is this shift star hopefully you'll be able to see that I didn't even I've not even put this on I just thought there's no point and plus I couldn't I couldn't be asked getting it off basically that cost me six quid off eBay and it's one off a one two a CG one two five, the five speed version, off the uh, off the ma the CMP whatever Chinese motorcycle parts sixty five fucking quid for a little piece of metal like that. The bike was only eight hundred quid. That's about an eighth the cost of the entire bike. 
should just get one of these things and strip it down and sell it for parts. You make a million off it. Anyway, I'm going to call it a day. Roger, sports fans, it would appear I've managed to fix my shitty gearbox problems. So there we go, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, down, fourth, down with ease, third, Second, there we go. First, Ooh. shit. Now, it's, now it's giving me grief about something. The main thing is that it'll go from high gears back to low gears now. So uh, I, I'm not going to start wanking off just yet, because you know what it's like. You fucking start celebrating, and that's when it fucking fails again, isn't it? So it would appear to be working. So I'll stop slating it so badly when I've been riding it for a couple of months. <laughs> Sweet. Right, just to uh, add a little bit more clarity to what I was saying on the uh, whilst you trying to get a really horrible view of inside my gearbox with this terrible camera. This is uh, the old uh, gear shaft selector thing and the wear on it, oh, I, I can never tell whether I'm pointing this camera in the right place, the wear is just there and that seemed to be where the, the cog rubs up against it. It's pretty unclear how, how it actually works in a way, you know like what part of this makes contact with the little star deal but um, this isn't the old star, this is actually the new one. It was a bit fiddly to get it out so I didn't bother, I just thought I'd leave it. Although it was filed a little bit sharp on the edge, I didn't think there was any real need to to swap this out just yet. I'll wait till it next fails though, but I managed to get these uh, these off eBay for re off, off, off eBay for well cheap. This was about 8 quid. That star selector thing was about 4 or 5 quid. Because uh, basically, perhaps people don't realise the value of it, but to buy it brand new off the Chinese motorbike website, 65 quid, which is absolutely extortionate, and I highly recommend you don't don't buy anything off them at all. What's interesting though is for the 156 FMI, this thing is identical to, uh, I think this is off a YZ125, Honda YZ125, <coughs> absolutely identical and a hell of a lot cheaper even if you buy it off Honda than those terrible cheap Chinese ones uh, oh yeah this is the one off a Ch the Chinese bike by the way uh, the obviously the Honda ones inside my motorbike isn't it but uh, yeah so it this is worn now I perhaps could have filed it till it was working right and it probably wasn't that spring because that springs not that that strong any even on the new one the string so it relies on the shape of that being right but let's face it what allows your motorbike to shift is absolutely minute amount of metal on the edge there like millimeters worth of metal Th really it could do with redesigning or making thicker or bigger or something like that maybe but so anyway just just to clarify that was what eight quid off ebay or something that thing's about four or five quid and it's just everything you need so don't go buying anything off them chinese motorbikes sites and it weren't too hard to put in or anything you know like you, pr you could probably do it in the dark to be honest so anyway i'm gonna call it a day in a bit